Hello .NET developers. This is the first in a series of videos on how I set up a new .NET development environment in Windows 10. The first program I install is SQL Server. There used to be a problem if you installed SQL Server after Visual Studio. I don't know if that's still a problem, but I always install SQL Server first just to be safe. I'm going to be installing SQL Server 2014 Developers Edition. To get this, you'll need to have an MSDN license or pay for SQL Server some other way. Microsoft has some programs that let you get an MSDN license at no cost, like BizSpark for small startups and entrepreneurs, and the DreamSpark program for students. I'll include links for those programs in the description below. Now on to the installation. Before installing anything, the first thing I do is make sure Windows is updated. So go down here and type in Windows Updates and click on Check for Updates. What you'll want to do is click on the Advanced Options and make sure you have Give Me Updates for Other Microsoft Products when I update Windows. This way you can get SQL Server updated, Visual Studio, everything else. I've already checked for updates, so I'm good and I don't have anything to install. So we'll go to the next step. With SQL Server, you need to have the .NET Framework 3.5 installed. Even if you have Framework 4.0 or higher installed, you still need 3.5. The way to install the 3.5 version of the .NET Framework is by going down here to Search and type in Windows Features. Then click on Turn Windows Features On or Off. And you want to check the checkbox here where it says .NET Framework 3.5 includes .NET 2.0 and 3.0. Click that, then click OK. The easiest way to install this is to click on the Download Files from Windows Update. And now the 3.5 version of the .NET Framework has been installed. Click Close, and we can start installing SQL Server. I've downloaded the ISO file, and it's on my D drive. So click this, and then double click on Setup. Yes, I want this to make changes. Now you get the SQL Server Installation Center. The first thing to do is click on the Planning option and then select System Configuration Checker. This will let you know if your computer is capable of running SQL Server. Here we see that 11 tests passed, 0 failed, so I can go ahead and install. Click on the installation and select new SQL Server standalone installation or add features to an existing installation. Comes up and asks for the product key which should be pre-filled Click on Next, accept the license term, we see a warning here for Windows Firewall. Other programs use SQL Server by connecting to it through a port. The Windows Firewall locks down most of your ports to keep you safe from viruses. What we'll need to do eventually is open up the port for SQL Server so other programs can talk to it. But for now, we'll just click Next. Select the SQL Server feature installation. 
and it shows you a list of all the features you can install. I usually install pretty much the bare minimum, so I select Database Engine Services and the Management Tools Basic and Complete. Some of the other things are the Analysis Services and the Reporting Services. I rarely need those for projects, and if I do need those, I can always install them later by rerunning the installation and selecting them then. I'll go with the default directories and click Next. I select the default instance and let it name it MS SQL Server. Click Next. For the service accounts, I use the default ones. Just click Next. For server configuration, I always pick Mixed Mode. So that lets me connect either through a Windows user ID or through a username and password. So now I'll enter in a password. And I will click on Add Current User so I can use Trusted Connections using the network identity or I can use a username and password. Now click the Next and click the Install button. And now when it finishes, we get the message here that the computer restart is required. I'll click on OK. Check to make sure that we have green check marks for everything. And close the installation. I'll restart and we will open up the firewall port and test this all out. Now that we rebooted the computer, we need to open the port in the firewall. We do that by clicking on search, type in Windows Firewall, and I select uh, the one without the advanced security. Click on allow an app or features through Windows Firewall. Click on change settings and click on Allow Another App. Click on the Browse button and we'll look for Drive C, the Program Files, Microsoft SQL Server, the MS12 MS SQL Server, MS SQL directory and the bin folder. Look for SQL SER VR executable and click open. Then add that one. And now SQL Server is added to our list so other programs can communicate to it. Click on OK. We'll shut down the control panel. And now we can start the SQL Server Management Studio by clicking on Search, SQL Server. Look for SQL Server 2014 Management Studio and click on that. You should be able to just click on the Connect since we're using Windows authentication, part of the mixed mode authentication we used earlier. And here we have our databases. So that's it. You now have SQL Server 2014 Developers Edition installed, and now you can write programs that use it.